now salmon enter the ocean and a large number of them die. And the issue then is what kills them. As a fisherman, the observation is the key to success, right? Yeah. And that's all you guys are doing, just a more specific type of observation. With more... The key in understanding what affects salmon abundance is to understand if you get 3% of the juveniles surviving, it can be a really good return. If you get 1% surviving, it can be a poor return. So a difference between 1 and 3% or 1 and 5% makes a huge difference in the number of fish coming back. In the mid-1980s was when the catches started to decline. In the mid-1970s, the average catch of Chinook salmon in the Strait of Georgia by commercial and by sports fishermen was about 800,000 fish. Today, the total catch is about 20,000. So we've gone from a huge catch to, to next to nothing. This project is designed to understand why that occurred so that we can rebuild the catches back to a level that improves the overall uh, recreational fishery. The project is a five-year project that Brian Riddle was able to secure about $10 million for. Importantly, it's a project that is also going on in Puget Sound. So it's an international effort by a group of scientists that range from oceanographers through to fisheries biologists who are trying to understand the factors that caused mortality of Chinook and Coho in the early marine period. We'll be doing a survey of different microbes that are potential pathogen causes. And then we're also looking for any changes within the actual cells of the fish or gene expression of the fish that might indicate a, the health and overall health of the fish. Scientists around the Pacific have been studying salmon for over 100 years. And it's no exaggeration to say we really have very little information on what causes that mortality.